Um, I credit this uh, slide design entirely to Darren. Um, he did most of the work on this one. Um, okay, uh, so today we're going to talk about how we should work on our package, which is how John and I decided that we would lump together um, chapter five, which is about our studio projects and dev tools and workflows. Um, in chapter 18, which happens way at the end of the book, I think the initial plan had been something like um, encapsulating everything so that um, everything that was R related stayed in one part and then everything that was outside of R um, went to another part. But to me, and then I suggested John and he agreed, um, you should talk about Git like right from the beginning because you should save, it's basically like saving your work and it's like a checkpoint, right? So um, it's, it's important to think about setting up Git and setting up the packages, and setting it up right in GitHub or wherever you end up putting it before you even get started on anything else or writing your first line of code. You should have um, some, some element of Git, GitHub and you know committing and saving your checkpoints. Um, so, uh, oh, I'm reading the wrong thing. There was a thing with this. Um, so today, um, uh, if this is your first presentation that you sat through with me, I rarely ever actually just sit and reread re the chapter. Um, I end up just puttering with RStudio um, a lot. So today um, we're going to set up a package on Git. Um, and it's actually a package that I've wanted to set up for a while, um, but I haven't. So instead I've been copying and pasting a bunch of functions um, between a bunch of shiny apps that I have. Um, and this is kind of a classical use case for setting up a package and having those functions accessible between apps. Um, because as I change the function in one app, um, if I can keep my mindset in a way that makes it applicable to all the apps, so um, I can use that function, use that updated logic elsewhere without having to recopy that function from, from another place, essentially. So that will let me um, do that. Um, more effectively. Um, so we'll go into why's, uh, like why a package, why this package in a second. Um, start with a bit of a fair warning. Um, I use Git exclusively from the terminal. Um, others um, around me, friends that made here, um, complain about this a little bit. Um, but I do this for a few reasons. One, I'm really comfortable with terminals and command line. Um, I spend a fair bit of time with Linux terminals. Um, when configuring and deploying apps. And these are primarily ac access by terminal only. Um, things like PuTTY and SSH and all that is all command line. Um, and so while you're up there, you're going to commit to Git and set up a whole bunch of stuff. So basically, I just learned Git outside of um, outside of R in our studio. And I'm really, I really prefer it there. Um, and Git's a command line program to begin with. So 95% of the help resources 95% of the help resources that you'll find are terminal based. Um, so whenever you Google, how do you fix something? It's, this is the, what you'll get is type this into the terminal and it will magically fix your thing, or you understand why it magically fixes your thing. Um, there's probably equivalents of the various RStudio IDEs, Hadley and Jenny mentioned um, slash screenshot a few of them. So it's entirely possible that you can map out your own equivalents to the commands I'll use today. Um, the important part is really just understanding from, from today's perspective is understanding mental model as to how Git works and how you can interact with it, um, more so than using... Um, forgetting to mention that there are 153 Americans. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> a private... Hi, Asma. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, more than the 153 Americans use Git. Um, but um, yeah, so it's important to just build up a mental model of how Git works and how you interact with it, um, more so than remembering all the terminal commands I use today. Um, but I do recommend learning the terminal and getting comfortable with it. Um, further to that, here are some resources with Git I highly recommend. So obviously, first off is Jenny Bryan's Happy Git with R. Um, I'm a huge fan of Julia Evans and all of her signs. Um, oh shit, Git is a really good sign. Um, also, there's a really good one on SQL and CSS. Um, and also, um, oh shit, Git.com, I go to a lot. Um, in turn, uh, it's just because, it, well, partially because of the marketing of the name, it's really good, easy to remember, but it also like, it's really like problem oriented. If you have a specific problem with Git, 
go here, it fixes your problem. Um, Git Explorer is also good if you have an idea of like, I think it's this, I need to, I, I needed to do this thing. You can also build out a path that way. It's a really cool interactive tool um, for Git. And these are all, I think mostly, I think Jenny Bryan's happy to do with our, is also pretty terminal based now that if I'm, if I'm remember reading it correctly, um, but they're all kind of ways to help with the terminal and with Git. Um, okay, so today um, we're going to set up the what I'm going to call the Dynasty Process Miscellaneous Package. Um, so motivations, as I was saying at the beginning of this uh, talk, I I'm a, I do lots of shiny apps, um, and I end up copying a whole bunch of functions um, over and over again. So I want to try to show you like me copying the functions into a functions.r file, um, which is very classically the way like when you like it's like a code smell. You need to have a package right about now. Um, and I'll show you how to, I would set, I'm going to set up this package on GitHub first, and then I'm going to do, you can do it the other way around, but I'll do it on GitHub first, because I also want to show you how I use projects and issues to roadmap um, and possibly set up branch projections and so on. And then we'll clone it to the PC and we'll, we'll, I'll show you that, how I interact with the RStudio and in the terminal end of things um, as well. Um, so I'll kind of show you the the rest of the workflow. Uh, feel free to stop me at any time um, if you don't understand why I did something, what I just did, etc. Um, and let's get started. So if any questions that I can answer beforehand? Correct way to use Git. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate your support. 99% of the time, that's all you need. Yeah, thanks, John. Appreciate that too. Okay, um, so brief, very briefly, um, I have um, a whole bunch of apps essentially, and a lot of the time I end up structuring my apps that in a way that there's a separate functions.r file um, which gets sourced into. Oh, I should have just done this in our studio. Um, so I source functions.r into this app and it um, loads a whole bunch of functions. So I use functions um, that kind of wrap pre-existing functions, but sets a whole bunch of defaults. So things like uh, ps for dash dashboard header um, has a whole bunch of things that I don't really want to remember. So I just want to set this and you know change the font size and the color. Um, in this case, include the logo and the URL and a whole bunch of other pre-existing defaults in the sidebar. Um, and then a whole bunch of these other functions. So I've kind of isolated functions that um, to copy over. Um, so these are kind of just a set of functions that I think are worth putting into a global package um, that I'd like to have. Um, and I'm going to call this package Dynasty Process Miscellaneous. Um, so I'm going to go to GitHub now. Uh, and create a new package. This is the organization dashboard. Um, me and my friend uh, set this up because we wanted to have like equal access to it and not have one person own the repository. Um, so that was kind of a convenient way afterwards, but it'll look the same from your own um, repository. So you can actually just do it from here as well um, and just change the owner of the repository. In this case, DP misc. Um, from this, I find it helpful. This is gonna be public just so that you guys can see what's on it um, later. And really there's nothing back proprietary to the functions that are here. Um, so I wanna add a readme file. Um, this is just a convenient setup that will automatically set a default branch. Uh, I want to add a git ignore at this point. I'm just going to have an r git ignore um, and license. Uh, we'll just go with GPL3. Um, there's going to be a section on, there's a section on other stuff uh, on licensing and so on that we can look at later. Um, but from now we can just, you know, put this in right here. And I've set up a Git repository. Um, so one of the things I like to do is use GitHub projects and issues to help set up um, a roadmap for the functions that you want to put in or features that you want to look at. Um, so there's I have a FF scraper package, which I use this pretty 
effectively, I think, hopefully. I don't know if it's effective, but I, it, it helps me. Um, where I look at, I set up an issue for each main. In this case, I have a set of, um, I have some generics, and then I have functions or methods for each generic. And I set up each method as its own issue. And then as I tackle the issue, um, uh, it becomes in progress and then is done. Um, ideally by linking a pull request that like, so that references, I tackle this issue in this pull request. And then you look at the code that's in the pull request at that time. Um, so I'm going to do that same process now. Uh, yeah, it's very trouble. Like, um, I think that's what inspired it. Um, it's actually a Kanban board, but I'm not into, I'm not that into agile. So, um, you know, this is kind of how it goes. Um, so we can set up a project now. Um, just do that in GitHub by going to projects, create project. Um, in this case, we're going to talk about features. Um, you can use templates if you want. So in this case, let's go with the basic Kanban. Um, cool. So I'm just going to delete all of these starter notes. Oh, that didn't do what I wanted. Okay. And I'm going to add some other columns. Um, we'll call this one in progress, which is in progress. Uh, move forward. Hello. Goodbye. Um, oh, I guess I was doing it too quickly for it to set up. Uh, that's cool. Um, so you can add some automation to this. Um, do things like um, if you add a pull request, it's automatically moved here. Um, or when it's reopened, um, you can move issues here when they're reopened. I'm just going to leave it with just these for now. It doesn't really matter. Um, move issues here when they're closed, move pull requests here when they're merged, and close with unmerge permits. So I'm just going to make all of those done. And what I'm going to do now is just start adding some issues. Um, you can actually do it from here. Um, to add, so add a card. So let's say that I had some functions. Um, so there's a function for cleaning names, and then there's a function for UI header, UI sidebar. Obviously, like in, in a real scenario, you probably want to put mo a couple of these together. Um, if there's a related feature, um, you can put them into one issue. Um, so this actually just creates a card. Um, there, it's not an issue at this point, but you can convert it to an issue by pressing convert issue, um, which I'm going to do for each of these right now. Apparently my GitHub is a little lagging, but what this will do is create new issues um, with each of these items and it'll be attached to a project. So the moment you close this issue or you link a PR to this issue, it will update the status in your project. Um, so let's say, you know, we've closed this issue. Um, the project status automatically updates um, with this function now in the clean names, uh, is now in the done um, box. Um, and I'm just actually going to reopen it because we haven't solved it yet. There. OK, so now that I've set this up, what I'm going to do is now clone it to my computer. And by cloning, I mean copying this repository and all the information in it and downloading it to my computer, um, which I'm going to do with SSH. Um, it's the same process as HTTPS. 
um, uh, I need an SSH key to do it because I've set up two-factor authentication. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, my RStudio window and clone this repository. So I do that by going to the repository that I want, uh, the folder that I want to put it in, which is Dynasty Process. So CE Process. And then I'm going to clone it in here. So I'm going to type git clone and then press insert. And that's shift insert will insert into a terminal. I think control V and control C do different things. Um, this is just habits you kind of pick up. Um, and as you clone it, yes. Oh, I don't have access right now on this computer. That's weird. Okay. Anyways, I'm just going to go to the HTTPS then and do the same thing. Make a note to myself to figure out why my SSH key disappeared. Cool. Um, so now what I'm going to do is open a new session. Um, and that hopefully doesn't break my presentations thing. And I want to close this RStudio project. Um, I'm currently in the book club project because I was working on the slide up until 20, 15 minutes ago. Um, so I'm going to close this project now and start from a new session. Uh, copying text, Eric, um, is control insert. It's like control insert and then shift insert is to paste. Um, so I'm going to go to, I want to set my working directory as I could have done this with this, but um, what I'm going to do is you use the use this function to create a package under the DP MISC. So you'll notice I set my working directory to above the DP MISC package. And what I'm going to do is um, create a package with DP MISC. So the path is DP MISC. Um, and then press enter. And what that's going to do is create all of the um, package mumbo jumbo and put it into the um, DP MISC folder. So you'll notice when I cloned it, it only had what was in the GitHub. GitHub repository, too many RStudio windows. Let me close that. So it only had this at one point, and now it has all this stuff, and that's because useless is magical, um, and DevTools uses useless, so it's also magical, and we'll create a package for you. Um, and then you go here, and now I have an RStudio window um, in my new DP miscellaneous package. Questions on any of that so far? Is there, is there like a preference for, I mean, I guess you showed your personal preference of what you do uh, on GitHub first versus, uh, well, I guess you did like the minimalist stuff to set up the projects and all that and the issues. Uh, but I know you, you could like, you know, set it up beforehand and set up the you package, you know, locally and then push to GitHub and then you know, file the issues. Is there a reason to do one or the other? Or is it just like personal preference? It's personal preference. Um, you can start with the package and then use GitHub, and that will automatically create the repository that matches the folder on your local. Um, I like doing it the other way. Um, I always start with the GitHub because usually it's like a pa it's an idea um, or something else. Um, it also doesn't lock me into doing a package first. Um, so if I have an idea or an, like a repository, I'll start with the idea, the repository, the projects, the issues before I even start any of the R code, R package, vignettes, any of that. Like I'll start with like the roadmap first, um, that, cause that's how I like to do it. Um, you can totally start with the create package function like I just did. Um, if you did that folder didn't exist, it will make it for you. And then you press, you type use GitHub and it will create all of that stuff on GitHub just like this. 
Um, and then you'll need to go in and add your projects and issues and pull requests and all that other stuff afterwards. So it, there's literally no difference. It's just how you look at it. That sort of answer that question. I think, I think use GitHub still starts with master now. So technically creating it through GitHub today, I think sets it up to the more modern way of doing things, but I'm sure they'll fix that any day if they haven't already. Yeah, I think that goes, yeah, I think that it, it's, it's part of how we were, we were talking about doing a book clubber package, which would set up a book club repo and it's not yet there, but it's on the timeline for like the end of the year kind of thing. Um, as far as why mine set up main first, you can change this setting. Um, it's like branches or something. It's one of these settings here and it will um, automatically, pause to our defaults. It'll automatically set whatever you set here as the default. And I set it to main at some point. So at some point when we were, when it was popular. Um, so it's just convenient thought there. Um, but it does it there. I do it like this, you know, you can do it however. Um, you can do it the other way if you want. Just the real, this one I'll just go for. Okay, so now we've created a package. So it has a question. Yeah. Is there, um, is there another function to, to make them like a um, more populated R package directory, like with a test folder and maybe vignettes or, I don't know, I just like, I, there's stuff that I always have in my R package and having to do use this, use this, use this is like actually kind of annoying. So what I've done for work is you can have templates on GitHub. And so we made an R package template that has all the settings that we have in all of our packages. And you can, I haven't done it personally yet, but I probably will one of these days for the same reason that, you know, you, you can have tests set up and you can have all the stuff that you're probably going to do once you've read this book, especially you can have it all in there. Um, but there isn't a use this uh, function that does that. And I'm just thinking right now that clearly my answer to this is we need a package that just ha wraps you don't use this. A, you don't need a package. Stop. Please don't, no. no, John, you don't Please need a package. Right now. Just that one function. No, 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 no. It exists. This is the thing. It exists already. You don't need to make a package for it. No. What, Come on. So what is it? It's use tiny package. Oh. I felt like that came with extras that I didn't need. It was like too much. Jake, like just, just use tiny package and delete stuff. Like, <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah, you can totally make uh, use Jake. Well, yeah. and see, and and so this would be really cool. Um, this is a cool example of things you can do: is make a miscellaneous package that stores all of these like helper functions, like right. set up a specific package and add these folders, and that would be a good thing for it. You don't need a package specifically to create Jake packages. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, thanks. No, yeah, I need a package to create John packages, obviously. Not Jake packages. <laughs> ceiling, ceiling. I'll just create a tiny package just for fun. Um, I didn't set my working directory this time, so I'm gonna. It also likes to open an RStudio window. It might just opens on the other screen for some reason. So, okay. So I lost my presentation um, when I closed the first window. So let's go back to my notes and figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, set up branch protections. Okay, so one of the things I like to do is set up branch protections. Um, and what this will do is it'll prevent you from attaching, uh, from making changes directly to your main branch. So one of the things that's one of, I think it's a best practice, um, it's kind of a style thing and you don't have to do this part, is that you kind of make a main brand and then you never push directly to it. Um, all of the R's 
our for ds packages are like our repos are like this and what we do is you you create a branch that's specifically to do something and then you um make all your commits to that branch and then you make a pull request to pull that branch into your repository um, what this does is it kind of sets up like a mental model where you can like separate from the original branch in your repository and do you know experiment with whatever you need to experiment with and then when that feature is ready you bring it back into the repository so i do this here i think if i haven't already deleted the branch so oh yeah that's totally unhelpful i've already deleted all the branches um what i like to do is have one main branch and then autumn and then have a development branch and branches off the development branch which is i think it's referred to as git flow um, you don't have to do that now but what you can do is um, check branches out add stuff to it and then merge your changes back into that development branch or the main branch and what that means what that kind of sets up is a process where you can make changes experiment with things and name the branches um, this is um, very not readable um, and what that does is you can kind of like set up like things that can fail essentially and then do all your uh, code all your changes on that branch and then make a PR um, pull request PR um, this is it's kind of common in github or git parlance um, it means to take it it's literally just take your changes from this branch and merge them into another branch usually by something you don't own you can make a pr from the things that you own in which case you are making a pull request into so you're pulling changes from here into here and you're asking permission to do so um, and then when you get that permission or the reviewer will look at your pull request say yes we're approving these changes we're going to approve them and pull them into our main code um, so we can look at other networks and so on but i'm just going to go ahead and set up branches on my package here by adding a rule. Um, we're going to protect the main branch. We're going to include admins and we are going to um, The first yeah, one. I think that's it. Is it this one? <laughs> yeah. Pull request reviews? Yes. Is this the one that, but like, can I pull request review my own package? I don't think you need that actually. Oh, if you're, yeah, if you're just doing it yourself, you don't need that. This is a pseudo change. So I'm going to type up my password, which you can't see anyway. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, okay. So now I have a protected branch. So you can check and see what branches are protected by type, clicking on this branch here. And what that does, you can see it's locked and it will prevent me from pushing directly to main. Um, this is something you can do on any branch. Um, so for some other repositories, I protected both the main and the dev branch and do all the features there. Um, and the reason why I have a main branch is that the main branch reflects what's on CRAN um, and dev reflects what's on, like what's kind of unstable, but it's mostly stable. Um, so you can kind of have multiple branches to reflect that sort of thing. Yes, I say main, I mean master. Uh, master refers to main. We are now changing the lingo from master for non-context reasons to main. Uh, 3005, what the hell? You come to us from the future 10. Oh. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, aside from that, I don't think there were any other questions that I didn't get to answer. Um, were there any other questions? No? Okay. So I'm going to check off a new branch and then I'm going to add the functions from the. So I add the functions that I wanted to add and then push them into that new branch. Okay. So um, this is a little rapid fire, but 
we're going to go with it anyway. Um, so I'm going to check out a new branch. Um, by get check out dash b creates a new branch and checks it out at the same time, um, which is what I want to do. Um, so we're going to add package. We just type the name of the package after the name of the branch after. So initial package setup. Is it not a knit? You have to run get a knit or whatever. Tiny package delete my package. Right. Anyways, you can fix this by going through the route that we were, I was talking about earlier, which is use GitHub. The organization is dynasty process. Work. I want to protect that project is a yeah the use tidy uh, package did overwrite everything. Lovely. We'll see if that breaks things. It may. So I'm just inspecting to see what I've got here. Okay. So I have. Did we get in it? Is that what just happened? Yeah. I think yeah. So now I have to make it a thing. Worry that it's not going to work because there's already a repository there. Yeah. Shit. I think the easiest thing to do here would just be to to nuke the. <laughs> The tidy one, and then just redo the steps in your existing GitHub repository. I think that's probably the easiest. Thing. Yeah, I was gonna say nuke it from orbit. That's the easiest fix here. Oh, I can show you the dirty tricks I've done before. That would that would be fun. Um, so this is this is now unauthorized. Don't do this, but this works. Um, stuff. Okay, so go back, copy your clone again. You're going to clone it into a subfolder of dpmisc. So what this will do is create a dpmisc folder with the git that you want. And then go into this folder. So this folder has its own git, little hidden git repo here. You're going to copy all of these things into the upper level, replace anything that's existing. Should actually just fix it. Don't forget to delete the subfolder. Thanks, John. So the, now I'm just adding all the stuff that was created in the first thing, um, the created by tidy package, and I did that by typing git add dot is everything. Um, I haven't done anything. Initially, so I'm going to call this the initial like use tidy package commit. Um, so git commit dash m is message use tidy package push. Um, so it's going to say that it's not letting me. Oh, it let me anyway. I guess the branch protection thing didn't work. Oh well. Eh. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is check out a branch. Um, sorry. So what we should do is have a look and see that it did push here. So now we've got a uh, use tidy package. And this is really a checkpoint. So this is everything that was created when I typed use tidy package. Um, and then we can go back to this checkpoint later. Um, you can do git checkout this, this um, 
let's call them SA, S-A-H-S-H-A. Um, if this is basically the, like the code name for this um, for this checkpoint, and you can check this out at any point by typing git check out this. I don't know if that's a feature you can do in IDE. Um, I don't know that you need it, but you may want to at some point go back and look at what this was like. So you can type git check it out and copy this and paste that in there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is check out a new branch. And I'm going to call it add functions. And what I'm going to do is um, add some functions. So I had a, I had subsetted a few functions that I wanted to put in as part of this presentation. So this is just a few functions that I pulled out. Um, it's the same file I was referencing before. This function um, cleans names. So um, often different databases will have different names for players. Um, and this function strips out a bunch of common um, name suffixes. Um, so junior, senior, the third, the second, the fourth, the fifth, aren't really consistently um, used in player naming um, between platform to platform. Um, this removes apostrophes and this removes periods from a player, um, player's name, and then I've converted it to lower. So this cleans names from merging. Um, I use it in mutate statements. Um, this creates a header, as I was saying earlier, a dashboard, and external menu items. These are just add-ons to some Shiny. Um, so we're just going to copy these functions into my R package. So create uh, here. And what this does is it, um, it will create a function for each of these things, um, assuming that I export them. So we're going to talk about what that means in a second. But we're just going to show you some of the workflows. There's more to the documentation end of this. But what this will do um, is I want to save this function as functions.r again, because I'm very creative today. Um, and one of the key things that you could do is put the functions into your global environment to work with. So um, what I'm going to do is I use control shift L, but it's um, a shorthand for dev tools load all. And what that does is it sources, so it runs all the functions that are every line of code that's in this R file, as well as any, um, as well as the test that test that or whatever, if you have it, it will source the packages just to make sure that it can run them. Um, and what this does is it loads your package into a pseudo package called um, package DP misc. Um, so you notice I didn't run a library call, but it still put these functions in here. And you can inspect what's in it by looking at DP clean names. Um, you know, this is now loaded as if it was a package, just like what would happen if you loaded Shiny or, um, you know, that's that, etc. So it's really useful um, because it will automatically load things into your repository. So by pressing Control Shift L, um, it will load DP misc and then you can pass you can pass things into a function. So dp clean names. Um, I'm going to put in a name here. Um, so this is the name of a player. It's almost a real player, um, except for this abbreviation at the end here. Actually, he is a sorry, uh, distracted. Um, so what it's going to do is clean the names out of this function um, and uh, return the lower, the emerge name field, essentially. Um, so it has cleaned out the dots, removed this um, suffix at the end, the name suffix at the end, and returned this cleaned name here. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to make a change or if your development 
process involves making sub functions, it's really useful to constantly be pressing Control Shift L uh, because you can make a sub function or make a change like um, add green, add removing the word green here. Um, And then to load that change, you don't source the file, you just press Control Shift L, it'll load this, and then you rerun the DP clean names, and now it will strip out that green part as well. Cool. So I'm going to get rid of that. Source, save. Um, is there something else? Yeah, if there's anything else else covered here. Uh, no, okay. Um, we can automatically document as well with shortcuts. DevTools has a whole bunch of shortcuts. I don't think it's without any testing and without having written any documentation, um, it doesn't really make sense to do that at this point. Um, so we'll just kind of finish off by committing these changes and putting it up to the repo. So get status. Checks the status. Um, we've got a new folder called R. So we're going to hit add R. Functions. There. And what I'm going to do is push it to this add functions. This probably won't work on the you, first uh, pass. You have a typo. UI study bar. Oh. Cool. You can fix that commit message by typing git commit amend. It will open an editor. And then save that change. And you can run git push, but you'll notice we tried to run git push earlier um, and it didn't work because the branch doesn't exist in your. Um, It doesn't exist in your main repository. So what you'll need to do is just add a flag to your git push command to say, if it doesn't exist, make the branch. Um, so git push um, set upstream is the command, uh, which is what git was. Hello. So git push doesn't have, so the current branch doesn't have an upstream, so you can type out this whole string, which is git push dash dash set upstream origin, uh, which is the GitHub repository. That's anytime you see the word origin, it means the repository that's on GitHub, and then add function. So I'm just gonna type that out now. What that's gonna do is create a new branch on GitHub That you can now run a pull request on. So when you load this here, you can pull request. You can make a pull request by clicking compare and pull request. Um, so we can it's able to merge. And then as part of this, you can link issues um, by using closing keywords. So this closes. So this particular request closes number one, closes number two. I think you actually have to write out closes each time, um, which is kind of annoying, but hey, what the heck. I, I've always found this uh, a little magical. Because there's like, whenever you type out like closes and then the issue number, uh, like there's no hyperlinking. Well, I mean, it's like a markdown editor, so of course there's no like interactive hyperlinking, but I don't know. There's, that this is a little bit awkward, but uh, maybe that's just me. Yeah, it's. I think it's just it's automatically like just string detecting the message that's in here. So you could edit this later and add the closes and so on, and it will add for you. Um, I think it also it also takes the words resolve and fixes. Um, 
there are closing keywords. Um, there's a thing for closing key keywords later. Um, and then, you know, you can review the changes. So I review it usually by just looking at the files changed. Um, it will show you the diffs here. Um, so, you know, we just added this one file. And then I'm going to merge this pull request into my main branch. And so it has now successfully closed all those things. And you'll notice that it also moved all the stuff out of my to do and into the done. I like to use in progress. I move stuff into in progress manually um, and then automatically move stuff as done um, by closing the issue in the pull request. That's, that's kind of how I like to do it. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. Let me check. So that's everything I thought was kind of interesting to show you um, as far as my workflow goes. Um, I see John um, is plugging RCU Git UI. Um, yeah. But yeah, otherwise that's kind of everything I wanted to talk about. Um, so again, I set this up. I did know I was going to name it DPMISC, um, so that was a bit of foresight. Um, and so you can hit this up and see the repository and projects um, that are set up. Um, this will actually, like, I actually have a use for this package, so I'll probably continue developing it over the course of however long, um, mostly for internal, so documentation will be sparse. If you want to see other another package I've made, um, FF Scraper is on CRAN. Um, and uses similar-ish things. There were mistakes, that, there were many, 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 many mistakes made, um, but um, it, uh, yeah, it's good. Like, I, I've enjoyed making packages despite my prototypical complaining that John makes everything a package that shouldn't be a package. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? That was a lot. Um, did you, so you said like you only use uh, the middle, like the in progress. Well, I guess it's something that goes, there's like a, if there's an issue, like when is something in the in progress state? I guess that, yeah. You, I don't use it personally um, as, like, you can automate in progress as its own thing. John might have some ideas with JIRA automation. Um, but I like to just do it, like, I have this set as one of my home screens, home screen tabs, and it will open up this and show me the thing I've been working on. Um, you can also, like, automate it for other things. But like, let's say like, I just finished a bunch of stuff on this yesterday, so it's kind of empty. But like, let's say I wanted to work on this, I'll like, automatically populate all the issues here. So like if even if like a user comes in and adds an issue, it goes into my to do. Um, and then in progress is literally just whatever I'm looking at right now. And then done is done. Um, you can have a separate bucket, just add a column here for like user submitted issues, have a bucket for like features. So I do tags, I do like, I label things feature to do document, blah, blah, blah like to do here, meaning, yes, I'm going to do it. Um, feature meaning, it's not like, you know, a whole feature request or enhancement. Um, documentation is just documentation. Um, you can configure these labels uh, here. And I think there's a use this function that configures these as well. So, um, you know, I label, I use labels as much as I do use these buckets. But it's just convenient because I've got it set up with this little like progress bar. And then as I get closer and closer, this is kind of the next thing I'll push to CRAN um, for version 1.1. Do you use milestones? No. Um, you can. Uh, it's the same idea, I think. Regarding just... in progress, we use that a lot for sprint planning. So the issues go into to do, and then once we've assigned, like, divvied them out across the team. Uh, they all go into in progress. I I like to stick with um, 
I mean, I don't, I haven't used Git projects successfully yet because we're very invested in Jira, but it's the same idea. And I just use in progress for literally, what am I typing in? Like I am actively working on this ticket. And if I'm like, if I stop working on it, it goes back to to do. So that way people, you know, my teammates can see what, what is my, you know, what am I working on? What am I actively working on? Um, so I, I don't automate that column ever. Like that's very much uh, manually. I, I am saying this is what I'm doing. Yeah, my, my to-do is automated. My in-progress is not. And or is. I, I do it when I add pull requests, I guess. But usually I add pull requests related directly to an issue, and I don't think it opens a ticket. I don't know. I don't really think about it. I move stuff here manually. It's the same answer as John. Anything else? I was what so this is this Git projects is really good projects is really cool. I wonder can you integrate it with software like Jira? So when you like do one in like Jira, it'll just automatically do it here because that would be pretty cool. John could probably speak better to Jira. Um, it's I possible. Jira's I haven't separate. done it. Okay. It, it is separate, but they both have hooks, so you can hook them together. I can't tell you how to do that, but it's possible. Gotcha. It's a little bit of duplication feature-wise, though. Like Jira is also a management Kanban kind of salt solution as well. So using Git projects and Jira in sync can be confusing unless it's like a sub project or something. Like you manage the largest scope on Jira or the largest scope on GitHub projects, and then Jira manages the other one. Um, and then you solve it on Jira or you solve it on GitHub projects and then you solve it like when that whole feature is done, you know, this whole project board is done, you push it up to Jira. Yeah, I was more Yeah, I was more thinking just like you do everything in Jira, but it just kind of populates this GitHub project without having to like do it in both places. So just be you can I don't know if that makes sense. Doesn't Jira have a Kanban board view? Yes. Um, you can like you can make it talk in both directions. Like my entire company uses Jira, but some of us use um, Git. Like are working in public repos, and so we want them to be in GitHub so that they're like usable. Um, and so linking that together actually is something I need to work on at some point. And the idea for me would be, um, yes, it is duplicated but some people are working over in Jira, some people working in GitHub, and it's doing all the same things everywhere. And then the idea being that when I say close is number one, that would close the equivalent Jira ticket, and that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that's exactly what I was, what yeah. I was trying to think of there. <laughs> yeah, they're both, like GitHub projects is very, very, very tightly integrated to the issues and PRs system. So if Jira looks to the issues and PRs and the statuses of those, then it's the same thing. Yep. It can auto populate pretty quickly. I'm also largely like, for a lot of uses, GitHub is just getting to the point where it's easier to just use GitHub. Um, so that might be coming soon for my projects. So it's good to see yeah. this. Yeah, I actually use GitLab at work. I wonder if it has similar functionality. I assume it does. So, I don't know that they have the like Kanban board kind of view, but I don't know. Yeah, I know it does have integration with Jira, but I don't know if it has its own little kind of board like that. Yeah, when I first saw it, it's basically Trello, but directly tied to issues. So all of the automation, like all, if you're already using issues to do things, um, it's really nice. And then if you're not, it's cool because you can do it and it's already, it's not like a whole nother ecosystem that you have to work with. 
to do your workflow management. So I think it's yeah. really convenient. No, I really like it. Like I'd, I'd rather just like use this, like use something that's native to the, like the, where the code lives, everything lives there, than like have a separate software for that. Like I think it's, I think it's really cool. Yeah, definitely. All like, I know Azure, like DevOps has similar features, um, kind of its own contained ecosystem with its own repositories and so on. And I, at work, that's what we use and it's the same thing. Awesome. Uh, GitLab, I don't know. GitLab is just a competitor to GitHub. Um, you, it actually offers self-hosted options. So you'll probably find, um, like you can actually host your own GitLab on your own corporate server. And yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. Benefits. I think that's why we use it. Yeah. So instead of like GitLab.com, it's, you know, dynastyprocess.com slash GitLab. Yeah, gitlab.nordstrom.com is ours. Okay. I don't know if it has the same projects feature. It might just name something different, but I know they're like competing directly with each other. And so like, if they don't already have it, they might sue kind yeah. of feeling. Um, oh, I see here under issues, there's a boards thing. So that might be it. Issue, oh yeah, issue boards, here we go. Yeah, this is totally the same thing. Yeah. It's very related, and I think it's probably integrated the same way. Yeah. Is that a Viridis color scheme here? No? Your issues. It looks like the. Oh, this. That's just what I picked the colors for. I don't... You just think in Viridis? Of course. <laughs> no, you? I'm a big fan of Hulk. Nice. Oh, I, <laughs> I use the Hulk color scheme a lot. Um, there was a Twitter thread about it recently. Um, yeah, uh, I do like purple is bad, green is good, and then like it goes from purple to green, like purple to white to green. Uh, I definitely feel like a breaking change should be green in the Hulk color scheme. Uh, a purple. smashing change? <laughs> yes, yeah. a smashing change. <laughs> Fair. I should I should go back and rethink these colors, but I think it's categorical, so it's slightly different. Anyways, I think everybody should have a miscellaneous package. Um, especially as our users. I don't know that you need a package for everything. Um, and then if that feature set grows enough that it needs its own package or is used by other people, um, that's when you would shift packages. I'm going to get my spiel out now before John comes around next week and like holy blows all that up because he's, he's totally going to do it. I want to hate it so much, but I want to be there anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, uh, that was it. Um, I don't have anything else to tell you about things. And I carved a bunch of pumpkins over the past two weeks. So um, check those out. The pumpkin looks, pumpkins look very cool. I love the Darth Vader. You should show us the Darth Vader. I should show you the pumpkins. I should show you pumpkins. Okay. Uh, the one thing that we didn't talk about that I had, or that I called out from the chapter was uh, the available package can help you find names for things if you're like actually working on a package to release it. Oh um, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, but that's covered in the book. It's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward and it's kind of cool. Like it'll tell you if the package that you you know package name you have in mind accidentally um, means something bad, <laughs> things like that. So I carved this over the weekend. Um, I've been trying to carve a pumpkin every weekend. Um, so that's Vader. Also Strange Planet last weekend. How long does that take? Uh, about one Sunday night football game a week. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's nice, nice. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I do shiny apps and so on. So if you wanted to check out more of my work, 